Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. Welcome to my game room. I'm so happy to have you here. Today I'm going to be going over my PlayStation 4 collection, which I think is my biggest collection. The NES might beat it out. I'm not quite sure. They're close. They're neck and neck. The Game Eye app says my PlayStation 4 collection is worth $15,000, which blew me away. And what's crazy about that is a lot of these games are so rare and obscure, they don't even, they're not even in the Game Eye app yet. So there's like question marks or they're just not in there. There's 412 games to go over, which is a lot. That's a lot. That would take hours. So I'm going to split this video into multiple parts and I'll be releasing it throughout the week instead of one like four or five hour long video all at once. It's a lot of games to go through even for one video. As a matter of fact, I'll insert a picture right here of what one video's worth of games looks like. So like one third of the games right here. That's unbelievable that <laughs> so many flipping games. So no time to waste, even though we've already wasted some. Let's dive right in. And of course, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. All right, so these are in somewhat alphabetical order. They're all in alphabetical order, with the exception of games that start with the. All my games are in a spreadsheet, and I went through the spreadsheet to make sure I didn't forget any games, and the games that start with the are all put in the T's. So The Binding of Isaac, those games will be with the T video. That way I can keep it organized and not miss anything. First up, we have a mouthful, dot .hack slash GU last recode. <laughs> this is the PS4 re-release of all the dot .hack games. There's four on here, I believe. There were three released on the PlayStation 2. They re-released them here. I think they're remastered. And they did a fourth one, a sequel that finally finished the story. I've never played these, but I'm really looking forward to getting into them. Up next, an Atlas game. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. It's sealed. I haven't played it. I know it's supposed to be pretty good. I love Atlas games and I like, uh, who's the company that does these? Uh, they did like Dragon's Crown and uh, maybe it'll be on here. Vanillaware. Vanillaware did this game. So it looks pretty good, but I think it's kind of like a, almost like a visual novel. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> Here's one most of you have probably never heard of. 428 Shibuya Scramble, and this got a U.S. release. <laughs> I think this is one of these like FMV, choose your own adventure style games, but obviously it's set in the Shibuya, Shibuya area of Japan, or Tokyo, so it should be pretty cool. I remember this getting really good reviews when it came out, and I never got around to playing it. It's in the backlog. I'll get to it eventually, but this is supposed to be a really cool game. A Plague Tale Innocence. I haven't played it yet. The sequel just came out. I'm going to get to this one one day. I think I'll probably like it. A Way Out. I played this one. It has to be played co-op, and I played it with my wife. And we both really enjoyed it. It's kind of a prison escape game slash revenge mystery uh, thing, but it's cool. The two characters like play almost independently from each other for large portions of the game, and it's really cool. We enjoyed it a lot. My wife and I are currently playing the next game that this company made. We'll get to that one a little bit later. This one I had a mild interest in playing, but I didn't get around to it. Uh, and by the time I went to buy it, it had like ballooned in price. And it's kind of expensive now and hard to find. But if you get the PAL import, it's not as much. You can still get it on Amazon for like $50 or $60. And that's AI The Somnium Files. And I think this is like a visual novel. And I also got the sequel to that. I picked this one up from somebody, and so that's why I went and got the, the first game, so I would have both. I don't think you can play this without playing the first one, for sure. Abzu. This is one of these, like, kind of chill, exploratory games, kind of like Journey or Flower. It may even be made by the same company. I'm not sure. I haven't played this yet. My daughter's dying to play this, so we'll see how it goes, but it's in the backlog like a lot of these. Accounting Plus. <laughs> this is done by the guys that do Rick and Morty, and this is a VR game, and 
it is super silly and it's very much Rick and Morty humor. It was all right. I didn't think it was super great. Um, I, I played it in like one sitting. It's got a ton of profanity in it, which I think the humor relied more on being shocking than clever. But, you know, this one's kind of hard to find now. I think this was a limited run game. This is kind of an obscure shmup that was like a super bargain bin game called Aces of the Luftwaffe, which is a Euro shmup through and through. It's not super great. The enemy placement's bad. They're kind of bullet spongy. It's got a lot of weird gimmicks for like your, your pilot will get air sick or motion sick while flying and you can't control the plane and stuff, which is really hard in a shmup and you're trying to avoid stuff. So this one's kind of eh. It also has some DLC in it where you play as like Nazi German pilots as the heroes. They're kind of rebelling, but it kind of feels like, you know, a little gross. <laughs> Here's a limited run special edition game. This is ADK uh, Damashi. Is that it? ADK Damashi. And um, this has like a uh, repackaging of the Neo Geo games. We have, uh, what is it? Aggressors of Dark Combat, Ninja Combat, Ninja Commando, Ninja Masters, which I've reviewed on this channel before. And then the reason I bought it, Twinkle Star Sprites, <laughs> which is a cool uh, competitive shmup, kind of like... Uh, Tetris, where each person is competing against each other live, and you kind of try to you, you outshoot the other person and and make more enemies appear on their screen based on how you're doing. This one's kind of okay. These this is like a PS4 port of a PS2 game that's a port of a Neo Geo game. So there's some kind of like you can feel that it's a port. You can doubly feel it because it's a double port. So these are not great. This one's kind of hard to find, and I know it's kind of a heavy hitter on the Switch. I picked this up on clearance on some website from the UK, but it's Agalos, which I think is like a 8-bit si style side-scrolling uh, action game. See, it's PAL. I paid 8 or $9 for this one. I don't know how much the it goes for, but this is supposed to be pretty good. I haven't played it. Akiba's Trip, or Akiba Strip, <laughs> which takes place in the Akihabara region of Japan. And uh, everybody's like turned into vampires. And so you have to like beat the clothes off of everyone to expose them to the sun to kill them. You know, what a gimmick, right? <laughs> but this game like recreates a lot of the setting of Akihabara, which I'm a huge fan of. I've, I visited Japan and I loved it. And that's kind of why I got it. This is one of the first PS4 games I ever got. And uh, I thought this was a pretty decent game, even though it's the premise is kind of uh, naughty. We'll say naughty. It, it's pretty tame. It's... It says mature, but I would say it's more like a PG-13 kind of game. Ooh, an M2 Shot Triggers release. This is the Aleste collection. This is a uh, re-release of Aleste uh, on the Game Gear, Aleste 2 on the Game Gear, uh, Power Strike also on the Game Gear, and this also has GG Aleste 3, which was a game specifically made for this collection, and it was unbelievable. It was one of my favorite games this year or this previous year now fantastic collection if you don't have this one and you're a shoot 'em ups fan you got to get this one uh i have this first game on the nes and uh i bought this collection because i wanted to try the second one it's a modern game and the, the nes version is not like a homebrew but a, like a modern nes game and that's the always collection it's supposed to be really good kind of like a 8-bit side-scrolling metroidvania so how can you go wrong with that right haven't played it yet, though. <laughs> this is an early limited run game. God, I, I got to stop looking at the, the screen. Look at the lens, idiot. <laughs> All right. This was a limited run game. It's one of the earlier ones. It's actually number 19, and that's Aqua Kitty DX. And this is just like a cute version of really Defender. It's pretty good. I don't think it was great, um, but it, it holds in there okay. I don't know how hard it is to find these days. This one I got new when it came out as a birthday present. I have not played it. I'll get to it, I promise, but it's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I played like all the Assassin's Creed games when they were first coming out, and I got super burned out, as you can imagine, because there was like three a year. <laughs> I played like the DS games and stuff, guys. It was so much. Uh, but after Black Flag, I was kind of done with Assassin's Creed. I haven't played it since then, but I really want to give this one a shot. I think they kind of worked out the kinks, or Ubisoft worked out the kinks for this one. So we'll give it a shot one day.
This is a remake of a Genesis game called, is it Project Earth? I can't remember. Anyway, it's Assault Suit Lanos. It's kind of like a side-scrolling mech action game. This game's flipping tough. I've struggled with this one, and I was not a big fan of it. I don't like having to like change weapons and reload and customize your arms on your mech and stuff. And there's a fair amount of that in this. And if you like mech games and you're into that stuff, this is great for that. This is a side-scrolling one, of course. But this one was like a... You could pick it up at GameStop for 20 bucks when it came out, so I had to grab it. This was the 29th limited run game, and I played this on PC. I have the Japanese PC release of this, which is very obscure. It was a very obscure game until it came out on the PS4, and that's Astbreed. And if you are not a big fan of shoot 'em ups and you try this, you might think this is a great game. This is not a great game. There are like some real issues with this. The game tries to change perspective from like horizontal to vertical to like almost going into the screen space harrier style shmups. The problem is, is you're like side scrolling along. Enemies will be in the foreground, like shooting into the screen at you. <laughs> so it's like you're you're trying to dodge bullets from like 360 degrees while, or not even 360 degrees, like it's in a spherical range around yourself while playing in 2D. If that makes any sense, it's it's tricky. I was able to one credit clear it without too much trouble, but man, the gameplay in this is just not well thought out. It's more flash than it is fun. This is the best VR game I've ever played. This is a ten out of ten game, and this I had more reaction to this game than I think any game in the last twenty years. The last game before this that I played that like blew my mind so much was Mario sixty four on the Nintendo sixty four. And that is Astrobot Rescue Mission. This game is wonderful. It is, no VR game has come close to this in my opinion. And just a truly magical game. If you have a PSVR, you got to play this one. Uh, this is a mouthful. Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack. <laughs> there we go. I think this is the first two Azure Striker games, uh, which are kind of like Mega Man or Mega Man X inspired sort of games. I have like a bunch of these that are in this series. I haven't played none of them. Uh, I'll get around to them. All this stuff that I haven't played, guys, is in the backlog, and I'll get to it. I play everything randomly, so it takes a long time to work through this stuff. But, you know, I got the next 40 years, I hope, to do it. <laughs> but these are supposed to be really good. I know Rad Radical Reggie's a huge fan of this series. This was an early Telltale game, Telltale game uh, that came out, uh, Back to the Future, the game. And I just couldn't get into this one. Uh, these, If you've never played these, they're just kind of adventure games. Uh, they brought back a lot of the original actors for this, uh, which is cool. But, man, I just found it kind of boring. And I, I like Back to the Future a lot. You know, I grew up with it. But this didn't, like, hit that niche thirst that I had for more Back to the Future content. And I actually gave up on this one after, like, the second episode. So, eh. I think it's gotten a little pricey. I found this on clearance at, like, Walmart for 5 or $10 or something. This is in a recent pickups video. It was on clearance at GameStop. All their clearance games were half off. Blonde Wonder World. I paid five bucks for it. It's sealed. It may not even be worth five dollars. <laughs> we'll find out, but I'll play it one day. I got all the gamer score. I got like, I think it was 200 because it was a, a downloadable only game on the Xbox 360, but I loved it and I loved the music. So when Limited Run Games released this, is their 107th game. Uh, I had to pick it up on the PS4, and that's Bastion. Still sealed. It'll probably stay that way. Like I said, I have it digitally on the Xbox 360, which was the only place it existed before this. And this is a fantastic game. Uh, there's a narrator that narrates your actions all the way through it, and it like is adaptive to what you're doing, and it was really mind-blowing when it came out. And this is a, a great game. It's still a lot of fun. This is a tactical game, and I think it's an RPG, and there was some buzz about it when it first came out, and then like nobody ever spoke about it. I got it in clearance from that same uh, website where I got Agalos that was clearing out their stuff. Battle Chasers Night War. Uh, you can get it in the United States pretty cheaply, but I think this was like 99 cents, or maybe one pound, 99 pence. <laughs> and free shipping from the UK. Like, what, what? <laughs> this is so crazy. But I haven't played this, it's still sealed. I kind of like, tactical game, so I'm looking forward to this one, but I've forgotten everything I knew about it. Sorry. It's been years. This was Limited Run Games 122nd release, uh, 122nd release, and that is Battleship Brigade, and 
I know nothing about this game. I probably looked up something about it when it was up for sale and then like never thought about it again. <laughs> but it looks like it's a cooking, hunting RPG. Is this like a cooking combat game? I don't know. Whatever. It's supposed to be pretty decent. Short intermission time to clear off the table to put this stuff back on the shelf to make room for the next batch. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back for the next batch. <laughs> Sorry, it's so much stuff, I just have to make room for it. This next one really made me angry. I love shoot 'em ups as you can tell from this. Uh, and this is considered to be maybe the best of all time. And I ordered the limited collector's edition from Japan and paid like well over $100 for it. And it's the Battle Garega, what is it? The Revision 2016 Premium Edition. Right when I got this, I was going to open it up. Turns out the flipping game isn't even in here. It's just a download code. I was so mad. So I didn't open it. I left it sealed. It's still sealed. Fortunately, a few years later, Limited Run Games released their own version of it. This time, physical for sure. And there it is. There's the Battle, Battle Garega. Revision 2016 Ultra Super Premium Mega uh, Collector's Edition from Limited Run Games. And it's still sealed. I have played Battle Garega. I've not played it on the PS4, but I know this is supposed to be like the, the preferred, uh, you know, best way to play it. it. I hear even better than the, like, the PCB from the arcade. So we're going to get into this one soon. I've been doing a, a shmup challenge for a number of years, and I'm getting to the end of it. I have three games left to go, but after that, this one's way towards the top of the, the backlog, so you'll see it soon. This next game was pretty popular in that sort of Five Nights with Freddy's era that I guess maybe is still going on. It was really popular with the youth, but that's Bendy and the Ink Machine, and this is one of those survival horror games where you just like run and hide from the enemies and you can't do anything. It has this really weird like sepia tone wood grain look to it that I kind of liked, and I did finish this game. I thought it was all right, but I, I like my survival horror games to be more about exploring and resource management, not just like having someone stalk me the entire time and having to hide. I don't find that as fun. This is one of my favorite series of games of all time, but I never played the DLC, so when they released it on the Bioshock collection on the PS4, I had to pick it up, and I want to play the DLC. I've, I've played all the Bioshock games except the DLC, so bought this just to do the DLC. And we'll get to it one day. I like this series pretty well. And this one was pretty decent. Uh, Bit Trip Runner 2 it has like a subtitle. Bit Trip Presents Runner 2 Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. Woof, buddy. Man, that's a title and a half right there. Uh, this is pretty decent. It's fun. You just It's like an auto runner where you tap commands to avoid obstacles. It, it's really good. This was a heavy hitter limited run game for a while. This is number 190. And it, it kind of hit into that like roguelite Dark Souls kind of Dead Souls thing. Everybody was loving this game. And that's blasphemous. However, this game got re-released not from limited run games. And there's the blasphemous deluxe edition that has all the DLC on disc. So I'm mad at limited run games for not waiting for that. That limited run games game I paid thirty dollars for it or thirty five shipped or whatever. This ad boy I picked up for like twenty dollars off of Amazon. This is the way to go. That that old Blasphemous game, the first one, like got up to two hundred dollars or something, and then this came out and it just like crashed it down to like nothing. It lost like eighty percent of its value. So this is the way to go. I've never played Blasphemous. I do like this style of game. I'll get to it. And of course, this is the one I'll play. I'll leave the limited run one sealed. So maybe one day it'll. I don't know. It'll appreciate in value and I trade it to somebody for something I want to play. <laughs> I've only ever played the NES versions of these, uh, or the NES version of these. But these have been remade and reimagined. They're supposed to be really good, and it's the Blaster Master series. So I have Pl Blaster Master Zero. Supposed to be good. Still sealed. Blaster Master Zero Two. Still sealed. <laughs> And Blaster Master Zero Three, still sealed. These are all from Limited Run Games. And they released these on the Switch, and they released a really cool slipcase for all three of them for the Switch, but they didn't do it for the PS4, and I'm so upset about that. I would have bought the PS4 slipcase to like house all three of them. 
Um, but I want to get into these, but of course, everything's played randomly and I have to do the first one first. So these are way down on the backlog. I've seen lots of people on the internet touting this as like the Contra Slayer, like this is the best side-scrolling run and gun of all time. I don't know about that. I thought it was pretty decent. It was fun. There's just a, such a glut of like 8-bit side-scrolling games these days or 16-bit style. And, you know, over the last decade, over the last several decades, people have like learned to master that gameplay style. I have no doubt that if this was on like the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis, it would be considered one of the best games of all time. But, you know, there's a million of these on the PS4. And I did finish this. I got most of the trophies in it. I thought it was pretty good. And that's Blazing Chrome. It's really good. If you like that style, you got to pick it up. It's another limited run game. It's number 183. This one's supposed to be really good. It's another run and gun game. It's actually two games in here. It's the first game and its sequel. And this is one of the early Play Asia published games by, I guess, East Asia Soft. And that's Bleed and Bleed 2. And it came in a limited edition. That's just the way the game came. I haven't gotten to it yet. It's, I bought this right when it came out and it's just been sitting on the shelf. So it's in the backlog. I play everything randomly. It'll get there eventually. This is supposed to be a really cool PSVR game. I haven't gotten to it yet, um, but it's based off uh, one of the demos that came on the demo disc with the PSVR, and that's Blood and Truth. I think it's like a heist game. I love heists. I love heist stuff, so should be pretty cool in VR. This is, I think, my favorite game in the Soul series, maybe even over Elden Ring. I, I don't know. It's hard. G give me a few years for that one to like sink in, but Bloodborne... Everybody loves it. Everybody knows about this. It's really great. There's nothing, nothing bad you can say about this game. This is Limited Run Games release number 304, and it's Blood Rain Betrayal Fresh Bites. I played the Blood Rain games on like the PS2 when they came out, and they were fine. Sexy, like 3D platforming action games. But I think this one's a side scroller. Is it a Metroidvania? I hope it's a Metroidvania. I like those a lot better than just like action games, but we'll see. This one's not that old. I love these. They're 8-bit games. They are spinoffs to a spiritual successor of Castlevania, and that's the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. We have the limited edition here. Fantastic game. Like, very similar to Castlevania 3. But actually, maybe even a little bit better. And we have its sequel. I just did a review video of this. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Also limited edition. And this one's kind of cool. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, the game that these are spinoffs of, and I have the Kickstarter backer version of it. This is kind of the spiritual successor to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which if you guys know, it's one of my favorite games of all time, and I, this is the only game I've ever kickstarted, and they shipped it! I got it! <laughs> there it is! And I, of course, platinumed this. I got, I did everything there was to do in the game, and man, I know they've released some DLC since. I hope they release like a ultimate edition later with all the DLC included on disc because I, I, I prefer to buy everything physically. I don't like digital stuff, obviously. I played through this with my wife and I loved the first game in the series and I really liked the second one. This third one kind of lost me. The humor is like, feels like it was written by a 12 year old and the game frame rate was really bad and the text was so small we like couldn't read it. We had to like get two inches from the TV to read the text and we kind of lost us, but it's Borderlands 3, and she got me the, oh my god, the Super Deluxe Edition. It's heavy. It has a bunch of stuff in it and like a steel book, but uh, Borderlands is kind of losing me, guys. I, uh, this one just didn't, just didn't sit well with me. And because of that, I have the Handsome Jack collection with, I guess this has Borderlands, the pre-sequel in Borderlands 2. I think I platinumed Borderlands 2 on the Xbox 360, but I haven't played the pre-sequel. Um whatever. Maybe I'll get to it one day, but man, Borderlands 3 really put me off of it. This one's from Tim Schafer and Double Fine. It's an adventure game. I like adventure games okay. This one has Elijah Wood doing the voice work in it, and somebody else famous. I can't quite remember, but it's Broken Age. It was pretty decent. You kind of like play as two separate characters in two different time periods that it kind of interacts. It was okay. I don't remember much about it, but I did finish it. This game I played digitally on the Xbox 360 or maybe the PS3, and I gave it like a 10 out of 10, but it only ever got a physical release on the PS4, so I just wanted to have it to put it on the shelf, and 
Got it at Best Buy. It was a $19.99 game, and that's Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This is by, done by the same people that did A Way Out. So you control two characters at once. And if you haven't made it to the end of this one, the end of this is very heartbreaking. So it's memorable, but it's a great game, and I'll leave it sealed just to, as a memento to have on the shelf. I had like a passing interest in this because it looked kind of like a fun shooter, like first person shooter or third person shooter. And it was up on PlayAsia forever, like at 70 bucks. And it just like over the years has gotten cheaper and cheaper as they're trying to clear out their stock. It's not a very good game. That's why there's still stock of it. But it's Bullet Girls Fantasia. And this is the, like the Chinese, let me see if I can focus on that. The Chinese and English version. And it's okay. Like it's supposed to be like sexy girls and you run around like arenas killing enemies to unlock like new costumes and stuff. It was okay. It was mindless fun. I played it like over the course of a weekend. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I have not played this. I probably picked this up for a dollar somewhere. I don't play online multiplayer games, but I do kind of like the Call of Duty single player experiences, especially like the Modern Warfare 1 and 2. And I haven't played 3, but this is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Uh, GameStop clearance game. I don't know. What? Whatever. <laughs> we'll get to it one day. <laughs> This one's really cool, and it did not get a U.S. release for a while. It had like an Asian-only release, which I think I have here. and But it's all in English, and then they released it in the United States, and that version like is expensive now, but it's the Capcom Belt Action Collection. I think they call it like the Capcom Beat-Em-Up Collection here. Whatever the case, it has like Final Fight, uh, King of Dragons, Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, which is a really rare and hard-to-find game. Warriors of Fate Powered Gear, which is kind of a fun mech beat em up, and then Battle Circuit. A lot of these I don't think ever had like console releases. They were only arcade releases till this. And I played through this with my wife, and we finished all seven games of it. And I, I have a, a Final Fight uh, arcade one up, so we were very familiar with that. And this is a pretty fun compilation. All right, quick intermission. I gotta go put this stuff on the shelf to make room for the next batch. All right, we're back. This is a smaller batch because it's a lot of collector's editions. This first one's a big one. I wanted to open this up, but now I can't because it's like 700 flipping dollars, and that's the Castlevania Anniversary Collection Ultra Super Limited Mega Edition from Limited Run Games. It has Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, Castlevania 4, Castlevania Bloodlines, Castlevania Adventure, Castlevania Adventure 2, Belmont's Revenge, and Kid Dracula. All of which I own on other consoles. So <laughs> I might pick up the PS4 version of this one just so I can like use the replay and save state features because some of these I've never been able to, to get through and I don't have the time to like master Castlevania 3 these days. Sorry, I just can't do it. <laughs> I know this game's going to be magnificent. I really want to play it. It's getting towards the top of the backlog, but it's Celeste. And there it has the little plushy strawberry with wings. And love this. Excited to play it. Here's a roguelite. This was supposed to be really cool. I watched Northern Lion play through this, but I haven't played it myself. And it's done by Signature Edition, and that's Children of Morta. Pal Import. It's the only way to get it. Uh, my memory of this has vanished so much, I forgot the game existed. <laughs> but it's Cladden Returns. This is Sengoku. And this looks like a... Man, a 16-bit turn-based dungeon crawler where like you move a tile and the enemies move a tile. That's what it looks like from the back, but I don't remember. It's done by Nipponichi Software, and they're, they release a lot of cool games, but they're often hit or miss for me. My wife and I watched this TV show. It started off really good. It's kind of like going downhill a little bit, but she bought this game for fun, and we played through it, and that's Cobra Kai. <laughs> It was, it's a beat em up. It's mindless. And uh, it can get a little tough at times, but man, we played through this thing like with every character. She was really into it. And I had a good time playing it with her. This is like an anime horror Dark Souls spinoff, right? I mean, Dark Souls is kind of horror anyway, but this is Code Vein. This one I was interested in, and then it got like, it was supposed to come out on like a Friday on Tuesday. They delayed it for like a year. I, I don't, there was like a huge delay on this. Anyway, this one on clearance at GameStop or like buy two, get one free. I paid like 15 bucks for this or something. It's still sealed. Here's a PSVR game that got pretty good reviews. I don't really remember much about it. I haven't played it. Concrete Genie. Let me know if this one's any good. I'll, I'll get to it one day. 
This one's supposed to be really great. I got this for, I think, Christmas the year it came out, but it's been in the backlog so long that the PS5, like, ultimate versions come out, and that's Control. I know it's supposed to be great. This is from the guys that did Alan Wake, right? I really liked Alan Wake, so I might have to get that PS5 version. I'm sure even it's cheaper than my wife paid for this for <laughs> when she gifted it to me. This was supposed to be like the second limited run game that ever came out, and it ended up being number 91. Cosmic Star Heroine. It was okay. It's like an old school 16-bit style RPG. It's done by the same people I think that did like Cthulhu Saves Christmas, maybe? Um, it was okay. It was fine. I, I think I finished it, but it was not memorable at all, and it did not stand out in my mind. I was very excited for this, and my friend was so excited for this that he sold his original copies of these games. Like, over $1,000 worth of games because of this. And then the port is so bad. It's the worst port of any game I've ever seen. And that is the Cotton and Gar Guardian Force Saturn Tribute Collection. This has Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang, and Guardian Force. And these games have so much input put lag on it. It looks like a flip, like uh, like a slideshow. It's like click, 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 click. Like it's like 10, 12, 13 frames of lag. It is unplayable. And these are pretty decent games. And whoever put this port out should be ashamed of themselves. It's the worst port I've ever seen. Do not get this. It's probably my biggest disappointment for a game for the last couple of years. But in response to that is a very good port of a game in a remake. And that is the Cotton Reboot. Fantastic Night Dreams, and I have the much sought after Sharp 68,000 limited edition here. Uh, this is really hard to get, and I waited years for this to come in from Strictly Limited Games, and it's still sealed. I kind of wanted to bust it into an unboxing, but like, as soon as you open it, it's like throwing 150 bucks away. So, I don't know if anybody has like an open copy of this and they want to trade me for the sealed one, throw in some extra stuff, I'm happy to do it with you. I don't like sealed stuff. I'm just. It sits there so long that like gets to the point where I can't open it. And I hate that. And of course, no cotton game would be complete without the teacup that goes with the collector's edition. <laughs> Another break. Let me go put this stuff on the shelf to make more room. All right, guys, we're back. We're making our way through this. Continuing on. Cotton Rock and Roll. This is a new cotton game that came out this year, maybe last year. This one's supposed to be fantastic as well. Haven't played it. I'll get to it. Like I said, there's a lot of shmups in here. And this is one of the ones I'm most looking forward to. Crash Insane Trilogy has Crash 1, 2, and 3. I did play the Crash games on the PlayStation 1 back in the day, like everyone my age did. On this one so far, I've played Crash Bandicoot 1. I play everything randomly, and when a game's like a compilation, I treat each individual game in the compilation like it's its own game. So 2 and 3 are still in the backlog. I'll get to them. I think this was like a distributed title through Strictly Limited Games. I don't remember anything about this. It's obviously an RPG, but it's cross-code. And this came with a steelbook, but it gave me, they gave me like the normal version and the steelbook, and the normal version still sealed, and the steelbook's just hanging out in a tote I keep in my closet full of like swag and random crap that <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So I'd rather not have the steelbook and just have this, but it came with the steelbook. I mean, it just seems like it doubles their shipping <laughs> and my shipping costs. I've not played this. I'm looking forward to it. I played the Legend of Zelda spinoff of this on the Switch and thought it was okay, but it's Crypt of the Necrodancer, like an RPG roguelite rhythm game. We'll give it a shot. This one was in a recent pickups video, and I was really looking forward to it. It's supposed to be great. Haven't played it. My daughter wants to play it with me, but she's going to get wrecked hard. <laughs> That's Cuphead. This was the 18th limited run games release. That Curses and Chaos. I think this is just like a it's like an arena fight, like a side-scrolling fighter. I don't remember anything about this, but uh well it's, it says it's it's thir their 34th release, but it's the 18th PlayStation release or something. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh looking forward to this one. It's been on the shelf a long time, guys. Years. I'll get to it one day though. I love this series, and I played parts one, two, and then the spinoff on the Vita, and really enjoyed them and platinumed them. And then the third one came out on the PS4, but I like missed it and didn't get it, and I didn't get it on the Vita, and then you couldn't find it, and they released a compilation of all three games, and I missed it and couldn't find it, so I imported it, 
And that's the Danganronpa trilogy. And just to play the third game. And then they released a compilation of all of them on the Switch with like extra content. So I imported this from the UK and there's like no reason to open it now. So it's just hanging out. There it is. It'll look good on the shelf. I do love the series. And uh, I mean, eh, how can you go wrong having a little bit of extra Danganronpa in your life, right? <laughs> According to Game Eye, this is like one of the most expensive games I have now. And I guess, I mean, rightly deserved. This is a limited run games, limited release of a much sought after Japanese RPG done by Cave called Dangan Fever Run. And it has a really cool, like, hollow foil cover to it. Mine sealed. I really want to play this and I want to bust this open, but like, I just can't. I think this is at like. Five or six hundred dollars, according to Game Eye. And I mean, it looks great on the shelf. I'll buy it digitally. You know, I'm going to play this. I, I love cave stuff, and I've one credit cleared every cave game I've played thus far. So I want to add this one to the batch. But this is like a disco themed shoot 'em up, which is who's done that, right? <laughs> so it's supposed to be really cool. Continuing with the collector's edition of shmups that I can't open because now they're, they're too expensive. This is the Darius Collector's Edition from Strictly Limited Games that has like the Darius compilations of arcade and console games. There's two games in here and this is like packed full of stuff and there's even some more little swag stuff that's on the shelf over there. It goes with it, but this is like a recreation of the PCB box that Darius shipped in and Man, I want to crack this open and play it, but like I said, I'm going to have to buy them digitally because this is worth like hundreds of dollars now. Maybe I should just like open these games as soon as they come in so I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> but anyway, I really want to play these games. There's so many games in here though. Each one of them is considered like a different game in my backlog. So I have to play each one individually. And there's like 30 games in here or something. So this one I might be playing through for many years. And continuing with the theme of shmups that I can't open. <laughs> the Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors. I guess limited edition from Limited Run Games. This is like, I was shocked when they released this and I had to get it. I've never played any of the Darius Burst games. They've released like 15 different variations of this now. Like, uh, And they're very confusing. I can't remember what the Chronicle Saviors and Darius Burst things are going on, but... There's a whole Reddit post about it. <laughs> but this is the first one. I'm going to play it one day. Compared to those other boxes, this one feels really light. Uh, but these are supposed to be great. I like the Darius games, or Darius, as I'm supposed to say. But that feels so weird coming off the tongue. Still happy to have this one, though. I played this game this Halloween and was enjoying it. I kind of treated it almost like a movie. And the freaking game crashed on me like 15 minutes before the ending and corrupted my save and I couldn't continue. So I had to go online and watch the ending on YouTube and it ended up kind of sucking anyway. So <laughs> that's the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. This is the only Dark Pictures Anthology game I've played thus far. I know they're cranking them out like lightning fast. And I mean, I'm a sucker for survival horror, so I'll end up playing them, of course. I think that one was the second one in the series and this is the first one, but it's Dark Pictures Anthology Man of Madon. I got this on clearance somewhere. I haven't played it yet. I was told you didn't need to really play them in order, so I'm not, just as they they come along. Uh, there's a board game that people my age played when we were little that got a lot of people into nerd culture called Hero Quest. It's a lot of fun. They just released that game, by the way, for like the 30th anniversary, if you can get your hands on it. But this is supposed to be like the, like the, the PS4 version of that game. It's called Dark Quest 2. Um, I don't know anything about it. I just was a sucker for Hero Quest, so I had to pick this up. But it looks pretty cool. I haven't gotten to it yet, though, of course. Uh, I forgot this game existed. <laughs> I picked this up at a pawn shop. Uh, this is Dark Rose Valkyrie. Looks like it's just an RPG. I don't know anything about it. Tell me anything about it if you guys know. It's done by Idea Factory. So, uh, love this series. I got the. I tend not to get the limited editions of these, but I like the day one, like Steelbook versions or the embossed versions and. I mean, what can you say? It's Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's got a nice little slip case on it. I played and finished Dark Souls 1. I've played and finished all the games in the 
modern Dark Souls series. So Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Bloodborne, all that. And I actually haven't done Sekiro yet. I did forget about that. That one's coming up. Anyway, but I never did their DLC. I was always done with those games like long before the DLC came out. And I didn't want to buy the games, the re-releases with the DLC, because uh, some of the DLC was on disc, some wasn't, but they released a collector's edition of all three Dark Souls games with the DLC on the disc. So I was going to get it just to play the DLC. Then it turned out that I haven't gotten around to it yet and that this collection has gotten very expensive, like around $200. And it's the Dark Souls Trilogy compilation. Of one, two, and three. And this is dark. It's on the shelf. It just looks black. It's like so black. How much more black could it be? And the answer is, you know, none. None, none more black. <laughs> Did any of you guys out there get that reference? I hope so. Anyway, love the Dark Souls games. I was recently in a GameStop and saw this open on the shelf. And I looked at it and it was the PAL release of it. And I was like, I know the manager, and I asked her, I was like, hey, you know this is the PAL version of Dark Souls 3, or the, 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 the trilogy. And she's like, oh, we're not supposed to sell PAL versions of the game. Like, and she pulled it off the shelf, and I was like, I mean, I'll buy it. She's like, no, we're not supposed to sell it. And I was like, okay. And she threw it in the trash. <laughs> she threw it in the trash. She took out the discs and broke them and threw it in the trash. She could have just given it to me. or I would have even paid what they were asking, which I think was like $50. But I was shocked by that. Shocked. That they would like rather throw the game away than give it to me. Has that ever happened to you guys anywhere before? Like, I don't I don't understand that. Anyway, so I'm not going to be opening this. I'll just pony up and pay for the DLC and download it digitally. Because this is like crazy. But man, GameStop, what are you doing? <laughs> I like roguelites. I'm a little afraid to get into this one because I hear it's so punishingly difficult. But that's Darkest Dungeon. I'll get to it one day, but I'm kind of, I'm anticipating it, but I'm also dreading it, just to leave it at that. I platinum Darksiders 1 on the Xbox 360, and I have not played 2, and I have not played 3. <laughs> Here they are. I know there's supposed to be four of them, one for each, you know, uh, rider, horse rider of the apocalypse, right? And did, did 4 ever come out? I don't know. I don't think so, but I mean, whatever. They're kind of like dark Zelda clones, like 3D Zelda. It was okay. The first one, like I said, I platinumed it, but I got all the achievements. And when I was done, I was like, it's okay. <laughs> and this, I think, is like the Diablo-style spinoff of those, and that's Darksiders Genesis. This is a Walmart clearance game for $5. I don't, I don't remember anything about it. Did anybody play this? Was this any good? This is the most anticipated roguelite I'm looking forward to, excluding Binding of Isaac stuff. And that's Dead Cells. I know it's supposed to be like great, like one of the best games ever. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I will, believe me. This might be a gold star game. In case you didn't know, since I play all my games randomly, by playing enough games, I can earn a gold star and actually pick something I want to play. And I, I, I might use one for Dead Cells. Oh, here we go. This was the original walking simulator game. I kind of like walking simulators. They're kind of boring and relaxing, and I like that. But it's Dear Esther. This is the landmark edition from Limited Run Games. This is their 42nd release, and it says, I don't know, LRP2 on the spine? I don't know what P2 means, but this is pretty good. I enjoyed it. You just kind of like walk around looking at the scenery while there's narration going on, and you can knock out the platinum trophy on this in like an hour. <laughs> but it, it told an interesting story. It's more philosophical and wistful than hard impact, you know. People either love or hate this game. I love this game. I gave it like a 9 out of 10 and I really enjoyed it. I started it when I lived in my old house and I was like halfway through it when I moved to my new house. So I will always remember this as being the game that I was playing when I moved here. And playing while like I was surrounded by boxes because I had to pack up this whole freaking game collection. And when I was done, there was just like my PS4 and one game left and a chair and the TV. And I was playing this game and it was memorable and it was during COVID. And so this game is like, uh, you know, they say Hideo Kojima can predict the future. And this game's similar to like isolation that we all went through with COVID. And that's Death Stranding. 
I really was into this game. I loved this game. I thought it was fantastic. And I look forward to the maybe sequel they're doing with this. I mean, I don't know how it can't be a sequel. They announced it recently. But they didn't say what the title was. But it's the same characters, right? Norman Reedus and uh, Leia Sado start in this or in that next game. But what if it was totally different? What if it was a Silent Hill game with those characters? Man, that'd be a bait and switch, wouldn't it? This is like a, a Dead Cells ripoff that I think... Like, who did this? Adult Swim Games put this out? I, I forgot about it. Death Scambit? There's another one that was clearance from that website from the UK that was clearing it out. I got this for a couple bucks, shipped for free. So I want to play it, but I think they've released like Ultimate Edition to this since that have maybe the DLC on disc. I don't know. Whatever. I only paid a few bucks for it. I'll get to it one day. My favorite side scrolling shoot em up of all time is Death Smiles. And it's one of those region-free PS or uh, Xbox 360 games that's so highly sought after. The second game they did release on the Xbox 360, but it is not region-free. It only plays on a Japanese Xbox 360. And you can imagine how hard those are to come by. So when they re-released the compilation done on the PS4 of the first and second game, I had to get it. I love it. And that's Death Smiles 1 and 2. And this is the Love Max Edition. And this one was kind of hard. This one sold out fast. This was hard to get. And there's other collector's editions of this, but this was like the, the big granddaddy of them. And City Connection did do this port, and they're the ones that screwed up that cotton collection I mentioned earlier. But this one, what I hear, is pretty good. So we'll see. I really only need to play the, the second game, although, of course, I will play the first one again. But I bought this for the second game in the series, which, in case you didn't know... It's Christmas themed. It's a Christmas themed Halloween witch side scrolling shooter. <laughs> so, how can you go wrong, right? Deception 4 Night Nightmare Princess, The Nightmare Princess, The Nightmare Princess. You ever played the Deception games before? You like, there's like, you play as a, a princess and there are maybe a demon and there are like people invading your dungeon and you set traps for them to like torture them and knock them all around and do all this crazy stuff. I thought this was a pretty good game. However, all the trophies in it were bugged. I beat the game and did most of the additional content and got no trophies for it. Like my trophy count says zero. So I don't know what's up with that, but I think this one's getting a little hard to find. So if you can find it, it's worth playing and picking up. This is a roguelite pinball game called Demon's Tilt. From Limited Run Games, it says it's the 428th release, or P307, I don't know. This looked really cool. This is one of those few Limited Run Games that I like purchased on its own, not with a bunch of games to save on shipping. So this one I really look forward to. I like pinball, and I like digital pinball. Limited Run Games 373, Demon's Tier Plus. This is supposed to be like a twin stick shooter. I know it's supposed to be pretty good. Haven't played it yet. We'll get there. This was made by FromSoft. This is Daracene, Daracene. Mm. It's like a, I thought it was like a survival horror game. Uh, it's a PSVR game, but it's not. You play as a fairy that's like trying to solve mysteries in a kid's boarding school. It felt creepy, but it just wasn't. It was like, you know, banal and normal pedestrian sort of everyday stuff. Like help someone find their missing key. You know, find the cat in the tree. And everything's frozen, and you can like move around and alter uh, things in the environment, as I recall, to so when you unfreeze time, the people interact with it or something. It was pretty good. It was kind of a touching story, but uh, I thought this was going to be scarier. <laughs> I played a lot of this. It was pretty much the game that burned me out on playing online games, and I've not played one since. Destiny. This is the Taken King. Oh, man. Like... God, I feel like I wasted my time with this. Like, so many hundreds of hours. I mean, I had fun playing with my friends, but... Whew, Bungie, come on, guys. They spent $500 million making this game. And they're like, people are going to play it for 10 years. And then, like, 18 months later, like, Destiny 2 came out. <laughs> I was like, what? you just like, oh, my Lord. Paul McCartney did the theme to this. Paul freaking McCartney. Like, how much did they have to pay him? Could you imagine that meeting where they're like, we want you to write the theme to our video game. And he's like, I've won 50 Grammys and an Academy Award. And I'm the most famous living musician in the world. You want me to do music for a video game? Sure, $100 million. And they're like, that's fine. We'll write you a check. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what in the world? And made it even makes it even better is the theme song is like not that good. Like you can tell he really phoned it in. So Paul McCartney laughed all the way to the bank on this one. <laughs> I've been playing through these David Cage games for years. This is supposed to be his best one. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'll play it. And, you know, I like the other ones okay. They're, they're always entertaining. But that's Detroit Become Human. If you know, you know. I like this series, and I thought this was a really good game. A lot of people had it as, like, their game of the year when it came out. I don't think it's that good by a long shot. But it's still, like, an, you know, an 8 or 9 out of 10 kind of game. And that's Devil May Cry 5. You like in action games? This is this is the one. This is the Mac Daddy of them. Boy, I have played a lot of this. I I think got all the achievements on the Xbox 360 and played through the game like 50 times or something. And then they released it on the PS4 with the DLC, Reaper of Souls. And I played through that a zillion times with some friends and stuff. And man, woo, if I never played this again, I'd be okay. But it's still fun. It's Diablo. You know, this is probably the best way to play it with your friends. Excluding PC, of course. This next game I thought I was going to really like, and I didn't like it at all. Matter of fact, I thought this was a really bad game. And it's a shoot 'em up called Dimension Drive. It's from FromSoft, not FromSoft, East Asia Soft. This is one of the uh, PlayAsia releases. And uh, it's a shmup, but you like freeze, and then you... No, that's not what it is. I'm confusing this with Velocity. This, the way it works is uh, there's two timelines on either side and you can flip between them. So like, as bullets are coming down on this side of the screen, and sorry, I have to look at the screen. <laughs> They're coming down on this screen, you can flip to the other and there'll be like no bullets here. And, uh, but they, that, that was fine. I like that idea. But then they start introducing puzzles where you have to like flip over here and shoot a switch to like open a door on this side. And it became more like a puzzle game. And I thought it killed the flow of the gameplay. So this was a bad game. I do not think this was well thought out. It, it was too different from a shoot 'em up for me and not like puzzly enough to push it into that category. So it's like a bad puzzle shoot 'em up. It's hard to play. I struggled with it. And I, I spent some hours with it too. So I would avoid this one. I picked this up on a whim. I thought this game was gonna suck. I thought it'd be like funny to play for 20 minutes. And the first day I played it, I hated it. I couldn't really get into it. And then I came back to it and I loved it. It ended up being one of my favorite games of the year when I played it. And I became a huge fan of this series. And I'm trying to pick up the other ones. And it's Disaster Report 4. I thought this was just going to be like a survival game and a disaster. But it's like crazy. Like the scenarios, it's almost like Grand Theft Auto without guns and stuff. It's just these crazy situations that would never happen, but set in like a disaster area. And so I really like this series. This game got really expensive. Uh, it got up to like over $150 for the US version of it. So I imported the PAL version for 40. And then right after I did it, they re-released it and reprinted it. And it was like 30 bucks. So I got burned on that. The downside of this though, is that like the extra chapter in this game, the final closure chapter, is DLC only and it's free, but it uh it's not on the disc. And I don't, I don't like that. I wish it was included on the disc. And my version, because I don't have a PAL PlayStation 4 account, I couldn't download it. So eh, what are you gonna do? I still thought it was a fantastic experience, though. I'd recommend it even if you can't play that part. This is a CRPG, a computer RPG, kind of like Baldur's Gate and then that sort of thing. People consider this to be like the best of all time and maybe like one of the best games of all time and everybody gave this a 10 out of 10. Disco Elysium? I haven't played it. I mean, I'm kind of like worried about starting it, how much knowledge and mental bandwidth it'll take to play this game, but we'll get there one day. I know. This is another CRPG. Played this co-op with my wife. We had a good time with it, but Man, I felt like we had to stop and look up solutions constantly. We were constantly getting stuck in this game. That's Divinity Original Sin. And a lot of people, same thing. They gave this like 10 out of 10 game of the year. You know, it says here, winner of over 150 awards. I see it, but these games, these like CRPGs that are so focused around trial and error, I don't like that. You know, they want you to experiment and figure out how to like break the combat encounters and break the game. I don't want to do that. I just want like <laughs> my skills to carry me through the game and I don't have any skills in these games. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just running around blindly. And the same can be said for Divinity 2. 
People consider this to be a better game. We thought it was, my wife and I thought it was worse than the first one. It was just too bloated. Same thing. We were constantly getting stuck and having to look up walkthroughs and stuff on this. But we did finish it, so it was okay. You know, I, I wish I was better at these so I could appreciate them more. This is supposed to be a pretty cool one. I picked this up at GameStop recently. It's supposed to be like a dodgeball RPG, but dodgeball academia? Haven't gotten into it. Super Dodgeball on the NES is one of my favorite NES games. And so I think this is like kind of an RPG version of that. I hope it is. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Uh, my wife walked in on me playing this game, and it's the most embarrassed I've ever been having anybody walk in on me playing a game before, which is saying a lot because there have been some bad times in my life. My parents walked in and are like, what are you doing? <laughs> but she walked in on me and there was a raccoon taking a dump on a toilet <laughs> when she walked in and she just could not stop laughing. But this game is like kind of like the Katamari series, but instead of rolling everything up in a ball, you play as a hole in the ground that gets bigger and bigger and perpetually swallows more and more stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's called Donut County. And this was released by I Am 8-Bit. And I thought this was a fantastic game. It was really fun, laid back, good sense of humor. You can knock out the platinum trophy in just like a couple of hours. But I enjoyed my time with this one. Although my wife does give me crap about it to this day. I've never played this game, but I do like the series. I'm looking forward to it. This is Limited Run Games number 365. Oh, amazing. <laughs> hmm. But it says... 247 on the side. I'm going to have to learn what these codes mean, but it's Doom 64. I never played it on the Nintendo 64, but it's supposed to be really cool, like a horror, almost atmospheric kind of take on Doom. I'm looking forward to this one. This game was great. This is the reboot of Doom, and I enjoyed it. I've, this has the reversible cover, and I've flipped it out, but uh, great game. You can get it really cheap. Probably one of your best bang for the buck games these days, and love this. This is, came out in 2016. However, the sequel to it, I did not like nearly as much. And people love this game, but it was not my favorite. And that is Doom Eternal. I thought it was a marked step downwards from the first Doom. I didn't like the gameplay flow. I think they took too many ideas and jammed them in there. And it ruined the improvisational gameplay. Because it's like, you have to use your flamethrower to get ammo. And then to get uh, refill the flamethrower, you have to glory punch people. And to charge your glory punch, you have to do... Uh, curb stomping and to charge your curb stomping so you're like just running around waiting for your special abilities to recharge and I don't feel like that happened in the first one but it did in this one so th this one kind of killed it for me and the platforming in this there's a ton of platforming and I did not like it so I thought this game was still really good just not as good as Doom 2016 and this game is the only thing that I've ever done in my entire life that gave me motion sickness no roller coasters boats car rides other VR games nothing this gave me like extreme motion sickness and I can only play about an hour of it. So I never finished it, although I really wanted to. So let me know if you can finish this one without like feeling like you're going to throw up guys. So <laughs> let me know. I want to let me live vicariously through you. This game was okay. I'm kind of a soft fan of the series. I thought it was all right. I was looking forward to it, but eh, it was okay. Dragon Age Inquisition has a lot of fiddliness in it, like a lot of micromanaging stuff. And eh, it kind of lost me a little bit, but I did finish it. And I think I I tried to go for the platinum trophy on this one, but there was a the guide I was using was written pre-patch. That's right. And the patch messed up the, the strategy guide for it. Like the character I picked got nerfed completely and I couldn't do half the stuff I wanted to do. This is limited run game number 18. And it says here... 18 on the back, boop, and it says P10 on the side. I don't know what that means, but Dragon Fantasy, the Black Tome of Ice. This is like an indie RPG that came out, and they, you know, at the time, they, they were just trying to find stuff to put on disc. This was okay. I did beat it. It had like a flaw in like the second half of the game. I think the music and the sound turned off, so it's like a... a a bugged version or the disc was pressed wrong or something but i did finish it and it was okay not very memorable people are gonna roast me for this i don't like the dragon quest series i never got into it i don't like the cutesiness of it and just it's never stuck with me i thought this would be fun because i do like muso games but uh i only played about an hour of this one and i was just done with it and that's dragon quest heroes this is the day one edition I didn't get it when it came out. I got it when it was like 10 bucks at GameStop, and I still felt like I wasted my money. <laughs>
Sorry. This one's really cool and really big. It's the Dragon's Lair Trilogy. It has Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, and Dragon's Lair 2. And these are really cool. They were like laser disc games in the arcade when I was little, and they were very memorable because they looked so amazing. Uh, but basically, they're just quick time events with cool animation. But I want to crack this one open and play it. I mean, I don't know how much it's worth now, but geez, it's the size of like a vinyl box. Um, but still looking forward to it. All right, guys, another quick intermission. I think we're almost done with the first video. There's like one table worth over here to go through. All right, we're back. Let's knock out the last batch, at least of this first video. This is about one third of the games <laughs> that we have to go through. Duke Nukem 3D World Tour. This is like the PS4 release of Duke Nukem 3D that came out on the PC when I was a kid. I have not played it since then. I'm looking forward to playing the PS4 version of it. This is a, like a little roguelite, kind of like Rogue Legacy. I played a fair amount this year. Uh, I thought it was really good. Dungreed. It's missing that like a uh, meta progression where you level up your character between runs. It that like you max that out really quickly. It needed a little bit more with that to to drive you to keep playing it. I threw this in on an order to get free shipping somewhere. I think it's kind of almost like a Persona ripoff, but Dusk Diver. Uh, this is the collector's edition or day one edition. I, I don't think I paid more than 10 bucks for this, but I kind of want to try it out. I know they just released a sequel to this, right? I, did they? I can't remember. This one's gotten really hard to find. Uh, this was uh, one of the first PlayAsia releases. This is Earth Atlantis, the limited edition. Mine is number 534. I think maybe they only did a couple thousand of these. But it's this sepia tone, like hand-drawn pencil charcoal sketch, uh, exploratory underwater shooter. It was pretty good. I didn't think it was great, um, but I did enjoy the game. And I mean, the art of the game looks just like this. So you can see on the back, it's all... Let me focus on that for you. There you go. It was interesting and it was very striking to look at. Uh, I, I finished it and I think I'm... I don't know if I got the platinum trophy, but I think I probably came pretty close. I'm playing this with my daughter right now. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun with it. We're getting close towards the end. I love this series. It's mindless fun, but that's Earth Defense Force 5. Be on the lookout for a review of this. I'll be doing soon. We have about 10 more stages to finish. This one I played not that long ago. It feels like a rip-off of Vanillaware side-scrolling game. Um, kind of like Dragon's Crown or something, or uh, more like Odin Sphere but in a sci-fi feel, and it was okay. I finished it and got most of the trophies, and that's Earth's Dawn. This is an obscure one. I imagine this one might get pretty pricey one day. Here's a limited run game pickup. Uh, I don't know anything about it. They don't even... I think this might just be distributed by them because it doesn't say a number on the back, but it's Ender, Lily, Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights. Quietus? Is that a word? I don't think so. <laughs> But it looks like it's a maybe a side-scrolling Metroidvania. It's supposed to be pretty good. I, I forgot everything about it, but I, I looked at Metacritic before I bought it, and people were raving about it. This one's from Red Art Games. It's an import. It's a shmup. I don't know anything about it, but I buy like every shmup that comes out physically, no matter what. And it's Endocrisis. Should be pretty decent. This was a collector's edition that I waited a long time for, and I liked this game a lot. A lot of people consider it to be a very good roguelite. But it's Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> this is what the collector's edition looks like. And it has the Ammonomicon in there and then the game. And I played a lot of this. I did not uh, platinum it, but I like beat all the secret hidden bosses with all the characters and stuff. And uh, my complaint with this is I don't like that you run out of ammo. I think that if the guns had unlimited ammo, this game would be just about perfect. But I don't like that part. I'm sure that would ruin the gameplay, but... That kind of did it in for me. But this is fun to have. Picked this up from Strictly Limited. I don't know anything about this game. I don't even know why I bought it. But it's a, a dual pack of two games. This is Hammer Watch and Heroes of Hammer Watch. And the package is called Epics of Hammer Watch. And this is release number 66 on the back, it says. This is a huge heavy hitter. This is one of those uh, shmups that I bought the limited edition of from wherever. I guess limited run games, maybe. Nope, I bought it from PlayAsia, and it's like too expensive to open now. I have not played this. I know this is supposed to be a fantastic game, but Esperade Psy, and this is like I said, the ultimate limited edition version. 
It's part of the M2 shot trigger series on my M2. So we'll play this. I'll buy it digitally. I'm not going to crack this open. I think it's worth like five, six, seven hundred dollars or something now. I am super burned out on Far Cry. <laughs> I play like every Far Cry game more or less. And I got this one cheaply. I think maybe my wife got it for me or something. I was not looking forward to it and I played through it and I was just like, oh, it's the same thing we've done over and over and over again. But the ending saved the game. It was like, it was losing me, but the ending was so good. And that's Far Cry 5. This is the one with like the uh, redneck militias up in Montana or whatever that have like, you know, touted themselves as being the next messiah. <laughs> that one, not the one with like the drug lords that are running down in the Caribbean or whatever. The one with the rednecks in Montana. <laughs> And as someone from the South, I, I use the word redneck uh, fondly. <laughs> Nothing fond to say about those guys, though. They were total jerks. This one, you can see why I picked it up. I don't know anything about it. Farpoint, it's a PSVR game. It costs $5. <laughs> so it's sealed, more or less. The, ceiling's kinda, the seal's kind of torn a little bit. But I just picked it up because it was cheap. Let me know if this is any good. This is done by NG Dev. I have played like every NG Dev game and every one has like pretty much underwhelmed me. I'm just not into the developer that much. I don't think that their games are very good, but I keep buying them because like I said, I buy every shmup. This one I think is their best game that I played. And this is Fast Striker. And this was another um, PlayAsia release done by East Asia Soft. And of course I have like the limited edition. I think these, when they first came out, from PlayAsia were like 30 bucks. They only did limited editions and they had free shipping. So like I just got every one of them that came out. This one's okay. My complaint with it is, is that there's like easy, normal, and hard mode. And uh, when you play easy, you can only play like this character. And when you play normal, you can only play this character. And when you play hard, you can only play this character. And their play styles are all different. So it's like three different games. And found it kind of hard to like practice and get good but I, I i did get the one credit clear on this one i i definitely got it on easy and normal i don't remember if i got it on hard but i got really close i've just gotten into this series in the last couple of years i never played this one and it only i think got it was only released in japan maybe in europe or something but they released uh an asian version of it on the ps4 that was supposed to have english on it and that's fatal frame the maiden of blackwater i think this is the fifth game in the series um but here's the problem the game is in chinese it's in mandarin when you turn it on and uh you have to look on youtube to figure out how to navigate the menus in mandarin to turn on english and then the english is a download patch so it's not on disc so when the servers go down there won't be english for this game and i'm really frustrated and Play Asia, where I imported this, said that it was included on disc, and then it wasn't, and then they wouldn't refund my money. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I still want to play it. This is really, as far as I know, the only way to play it in English. Uh, I really like King of Fighters. I'm not as into Fatal Fury, but I love the Neo Geo. So I've bought all these limited run games, Neo Geo collections. And this is Fatal Fury Battle Archives 2. This has a uh, real bout Fatal Fury, real bout Fatal Fury Special, and real bout Fatal Fury 2 on it. This is, of all these releases, this is the one I was the least interested in, but I went ahead and got it anyway. Oh, Final Fantasy time. <laughs> Final Fantasy Type-0. This is a Japanese PSP game that they re-released on the PS4. I went through and I beat this game. I thought it was pretty decent, actually. I actually enjoyed this one. Final Fantasy VII Remake. I have not played it yet. I mean, I love Final Fantasy VII. I really want to get into this one, but, you know... It's just only so much time in the world. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. And it has the reversible cover that, cover that I turned around. Um, I played this on the PS2 and couldn't get into it. Um, I, I don't remember why. It was many, many years ago. I was like in college. But apparently they fixed a lot of the issues I had with this. So I went ahead and picked it up. I have also not played this one, but I really want to play it. I thought it looked really cool. Final Fantasy XV. And there's all this like supplemental stuff like a movie you need to watch and an anime and I don't know if I want to do all that but I do want to play the game. This is another adventure game kind of walking semi very walking semi. Uh, this was the 32nd limited run game released and this is like one of the most sought after ones. People constantly want me to trade it to them and I'm not going to do it. I thought it was really good. That's Firewatch. 
I thought this game was awesome. Really cool, really cool, and very engaging. Great voice acting. Here's another one of these Neo Geo uh, limited run games releases. This is the uh, Fu'un Super Combo. This has Kazuna Encounter and Savage Rain, which are two like very prized Neo Geo games. And I have a Neo Geo, but I'm not gonna pay thousands of dollars for the cart. So I picked this up. This is another one of those that's like a uh, port of a PS2 game that's a port of a Neo Geo game. And there's a lot of input delay on this and it makes it really difficult to play. And these are just fighting games. I was not the biggest fan of these. They're okay. Uh, Cause Savage, no, the second one, Kazuna Encounter was the second one. It's much better than the first game. So anyway, this is okay. I did a review of these on my channel. This looks like hot garbage. It may be a terrible game, but like I said, I buy every shmup that comes out physically that I know about. This one's full blast. Whew. I don't think I paid too much for this. It doesn't look great. <laughs> this one I've never gotten into. This is another Darius game, but this is G Darius HD. I have this on one of the PlayStation 2 Taito collections, and I think it also came out on the PlayStation 1, but this, was first, this version is supposed to be really good, and I picked this up on Amazon on sale for like 15 bucks, so can't go wrong with that. Uh, this game, it's another one of these games that actually is like a PG-13 game, but the premise of it is so vulgar that like I don't even know that I want to mention it, <laughs> and that's Galgun Double Piece. You basically play as a guy uh, who, I think he gets shot by like a Cupid or something, and he releases pheromones that make women super attracted to him, to him. So he's given a gun by the Cupid and he has to shoot the, the, the women, the women, the high school girls uh, to stop them from like ravaging him and jumping all over him because they're so attracted to him. And we'll just say that the gun he uses is called a pleasure gun. And if it wasn't for that, this game would like be very minor. Like, you know, it'd be PG-13. It doesn't really have any nudity or anything lurid or uh, lewd in it, but it's just... Uh, that concept is so like off-putting. Of course, I had to get the sequel and play it on the Switch, but it's not okay. It's an okay like arena shooter. It's kind of like Time Crisis, <laughs> believe it or not. So what's more fun is like finding the hidden objects hidden around the levels in this. But, um, you know, mature 17 plus. I don't know. It was okay. This was like on sale at GameStop for $5. I played the first game on the PC. The second game I don't know anything about. And I think this might actually be the sequel to the game I played, but it's Galaxy, Galaxy, and Skulls of the Shogun. These are like indie games. I don't know if this is any good, um, but we'll give it a shot. I really liked this. This is another one of these Telltale game series. Uh, this one, which has four chapters, chapters one, two, and three are on disc, and chapter four is DLC. Not DLC, but you have to download it. So... Screw them for that, because once the servers go down, you can't download it, you can't finish the story. But it's a good side story for Game of Thrones, and I enjoyed this one when I played it. I think I played through it in one day, and I'm pretty sure I got the platinum on this. And once again, we've got another one of these Neo Geo limited run games compilations. This is Garo Mark of the Wolves. I think on the Neo Geo AES, this game is $5,000. <laughs> and it's like... A couple thousand on the MVS, which is what I have. So I was excited to see this released on the PS4. So for, you know, 70 bucks or whatever they sold it for. This is just one game, and it's a really good fighting game. A lot of people consider this to be one of the best fighting games ever made. Um, I'm happy to have it. I will probably crack it open and play it, uh, unless there's a cheap digital version of it. But excited to have this one. We're on the last stack. St bear with me, guys. I know we're going. We're an hour and something into this. Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolved. I like the Geometry Wars games, but I think I've kind of gotten burned out on them. So this one has a lot of cool unlockables and stuff in it. But I remember it had challenges that were required to do to like unlock the next levels. And I didn't like doing the challenges. Like if you can beat a level, you should be able to progress to the next level, not have to play it three times. And it's like beat it without getting hit to earn two stars and then uh, kill 40 enemies and three seconds to earn another two stars. And then... Uh, only use your pea shooter to earn another star, then you have to have like 10 stars to unlock the next level. I get tired of those, and I think this did that. Uh, this was another East Asia soft release. Uh, I think it was from PlayAsia of a kind of obscure homebrew Dreamcast game, but that's Ghost Blade HD. I have not played this. It's a shmup. It's supposed to be 
pretty decent. It's sealed. We'll get to it one day. This is another one of these games I really want to play, and I got this as a gift, but now there's like the the definitive edition is on the PS5, so I might just get that one instead. But it's um, Ghost of Tsushima. Man, I said that poorly. Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, it, we all know about this. It's supposed to be a fantastic game. Sucker Punch did this right. Yeah, I like Sucker Punch. Uh, this game's like rare on the Switch. I played this on the PC. It's okay. It's a remake of like an Amiga game that was a ripoff of... Mario Brothers, I think. Anyway, Gianna, Swister, Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams Director's Cut. Um, you play as two sisters, like a good sister and a bad sister, and you can press a button to like invert the level from good level to bad level. And uh, it's a, basically a side-scrolling collect-a-thon. It was okay. I think I finished it. This game's great. It's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Its sequel just came out. I have it. It's not included in here yet because I haven't added it into my database. I got it for Christmas. And this is just right after Christmas. Fantastic game. God of War. Can't go wrong. I don't remember anything about this game. I think it's a tactical RPG. I picked it up cheaply. It was on my list for a long time and I found it at GameStop. God Wars Future Past. I think there's a God Wars Future Past complete on the Switch that's like over $100. It like has the DLC of this included in it. But... This game's $5, and that one's $100 for a couple extra packs that I may not want to play, so I went with this version. This is an RPG. I kind of forgot this existed. I think it came out on the PS3, but apparently it came out on the PS4 too, and that's Grand Kingdom. Does anybody remember this? I did not play it, um, but it's a Nippon Ichi software game. So This one was hard to find for a long time, and they reprinted it. This was an Amazon exclusive Black Friday only deal. They printed this game just to sell on Black Friday at Amazon, and I missed it. And I paid 80 bucks for this from a scalper to get it. And now you can get it at GameStop, who I think has reprinted it themselves. But it's Gravity Rush Remastered. This was originally a Vita game, and they put it on the PS4. I have not played it. <laughs> and here's the sequel to it, Gravity Rush 2. Much easier to find, much more inexpensive. This is another... Tim Schafer Double Fine game. This is a PC game from back in the day. An adventure game, of course, like most of Tim Schafer's games are. Uh, cool humor. The puzzles in this are very difficult to solve, in my opinion. I thought they were esoteric and they didn't really make much sense. And I hate to admit it, I played this a fair amount, but I did not finish it. And it lost me. And that's Grim Fandango Remastered. This is from Limited Run Games and it came in a slipcover. This is the 11th release from Strictly Limited Games, and this one's hard to find. It's a shoot 'em up. This one's gonna go up in value over time, I promise, uh, but I have not played it yet. And that's Gundamoniums. It looks like a pretty nice side scrolling cute 'em up. I picked this up at GameStop really cheaply. It's a PSVR game. I mean, PSVR, like, you get what you can. <laughs> but it's a Gungrave VR. I like Gungrave, it's pretty wild and over the top, but. Man, that cover looks really cool on camera, doesn't it? This is from that like Azure Strikers Gunvolt. This is Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avengers 9, but it's like the first game in the series or something. There's a bunch of sequels to these, and I'm confused by all of them. Whatever the case. There it is. <laughs> Limited Run Games. This is a dis distribution games. Um, distribution game. I haven't gotten into this series, but like I said, Radical Reggie loves it, so I'll give it a shot. This first game's on the Vita. It's a shmup. Hard to find. This one's hard to find, too. This was released through PlayAsia once again. Hybroxia 2. And it's a uh, supposed to be a pretty good shmup. Give this one a shot. This is a Switch release game. They also put it out on the PS4, and I bought the PS4 version. I think it's like an, an auto runner, auto battler. I can't remember. Has been Heroes. Mine's still sealed. I only paid a couple bucks for it. This is a limited run game release. Relatively recent. Number 418. Haven, supposed to be pretty good. You're a couple like escaping your refugees on a foreign land or something like that or on a, another planet. I, I think this one looks pretty good. I like, I like romance stories. I'm getting older now. I, I like lame stuff. <laughs> uh, picked this up at the Southeast Game Exchange. It was a limited run game, number 202, that I missed when it came out. I don't know why, but I was able to get it at the convention for $20. That's Headlander. They did a pretty good deal on it for me. You see they had it marked at 30 But I think this is like a... A side-scrolling uh, Metroidvania where you just play the head of an astronaut. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, this game was great. I 
I think it won Game of the Year. Very disturbing, but I thought it was fantastic. And the actress uh, who did this, she knocked it out of the park. One of the best video game actresses I've ever seen. And that's Hellblade, Sinuous Sacrifice. I know the sequel of this is coming out soon. And it might only be on the Xbox consoles. I don't have a Series X. It hasn't had any releases for it I've wanted that haven't been on PlayStation 4 or 5. So... This is good enough that the sequel might make me get an Xbox to play it. I don't really like this game. I did play this online with some friends and in co-op in person. And it's Helldivers. Uh, it's strange. It's a twin-stick shooter um, that's four-player cooperative. But you can like shoot each other. But you input like button commands to call down like artillery strikes and uh, stuff like that. Anyway... Uh, you end up like actually killing your your co-op partners all the time. It's supposed to be really hilarious, but it it felt more frustrating than hilarious. Anyway, it uh, I got burned out on it. I tried playing it two different times with different people, and you know we we gave up on it after a couple of hours. I'm trying to remember the Japanese. This is uh, Huso Same Same Same, which is like, is it Tiger Shark? Fire Shark, Fire Shark, Sky Shark, those games on the NES and Genesis. This is the M2 Shot Triggers release of it that came out this previous year. Really challenging games. They're a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to playing the PS4 version with the M2 Shot Triggers like training modes and stuff that make them playable. I have all these games on like the Genesis and the NES and stuff, but I want to play the PS4 version. I really want to play this. I know it's fantastic. I have not done it. I have the physical version of this on the PC, which is exceptionally rare, like unbelievably rare for the physical version. I also have this collector's edition on the PS4, and that's Hollow Knight. You can see the little guy in there. He's pretty cool. But I'm going to play this. This is a really nice collector's edition from Fan Gamer, and I was happy to get this when I did, and I'm glad to have the PC version. But uh, I really want to play them, so looking forward to it. All right, guys, the last game of this video, I think there's going to be two more, but it's Home Sweet Home. This is a VR game on the PS4. Kind of spooky. It deals, uh, it takes place in Thailand, I believe, and has like Thai horror, which is a, a novel and new idea that I don't think I've seen experienced anywhere else. However, there's an episode one and an episode two of this game, and this is only episode one on the PS4, and it ends on a cliffhanger and doesn't end the story. And to make matters worse, they never even released Episode 2 on the PS4. It's only released on PC. And the developers are like, ah, we're not going to even bother putting it out on the PS4. <laughs> so, like, you can't finish the story here. It's just so frustrating. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. There's going to be another, I think, two more of these videos to go through this whole collection. It's a lot. I mean, this is a lot of games. And just managing putting them out is... A Herculean task. <laughs> like the sofa and every spare table and chair I had out here had games stacked in it. And that was only, we only made it to like the H's. Halfway through the H's. So we still have the rest of the alphabet to go through. Anyway, I think the next video should come out in two days from when you see this one. So thanks for sticking around. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And... Tune in for the next video.